Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fishing Rod. Today we're finally going to be doing the highly requested boat tour. If you've been watching our videos in the last few years, you'll know that we've been fishing on this small 10 foot boat, which is great for two people. But when my son came along about three years ago, um, that boat became pretty cramped, so we had to upgrade. So then it came along this G3 1442, which is a 14 feet uh, long boat, uh, very spacious. And today we're going to take it down show you why it's a really great family boat and how we got it rigged up. All right, now that we got the boat set up, um, we're almost ready to take it out. Just want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, so the way, the way we transport the boat to the lake is on top of the truck and it's with, with the uh, electric boat loader. Um, typically a boat this size, 14 foot or longer, people will use a trailer towed behind the truck. Um, but if you want to tow a camp trailer uh, when you go camping, uh, that doesn't leave you many options. So with the electric boat load, having the boat on top of the car, uh, you can actually tow a camp trailer behind you as well to go camping. And the other advantage of, with the uh, electric boat loader is that um, if you want to go to a remote lake where the uh, roads are not very good for uh, towing a trailer, uh, then you have that option to go into um, those lakes. Um, the only disadvantage would be um, you, you spend quite a bit of time setting everything up. So once you have the boat taken down from the truck, then you got to put everything in, whereas on the trailer, um, you have everything in already. Um, so there's different, um, there's different options and different advantages um, to, to look into when you choose which way you want to transport your boat. Um, so the boat itself is about 200 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds. It's made of aluminum. And um, by myself, I, I can actually load this boat on and off the truck uh, very easily because it's, everything's run by electricity, right? Um, and uh, once it's on the ground, um, if you're one person, uh, you, Usually what I do is I load the boat directly into the water so I don't have, it's easy to move around but if you're on the ground you can put wheels on one side and then just kind of push the boat in that's pretty easily. If you have two people um, that's even easier so just one person on each end you can pick the boat up not very heavy uh, you can just drag the boat into the lake and it's very very handy. This boat itself 14 foot long um, you can put three people in it. Right now we have two seats set up you can put another one there. Uh, so with the seats uh, these benches are thin aluminum, so when I set this up, um, you have to put a quick release mount on the bottom, but you can't just put a screw into it because the aluminum is very thin, and if you just do that, it's going to rip straight out. So what I had to do was put little anchors into the four, end, four corners and then put the screws in uh, that will secure the uh, mount for the seat in it pretty nicely. So these seats are swivel seats, you can see they, they turn around very easily, very, very comfortable. Um, definitely invest quite a bit of money in them. I think these ones were around $60, $70 I paid for them and uh, they're very comfortable. You can sit in them all day and, uh, and you'll be, you won't be very tired at all. So the boat, when you buy this boat, it comes with bare metal. Um, the, the, the floor is not flat. So what I had to do was I had to build these floorboards, carpeted floorboards. I'm not very handy, but this, I'm very proud of it. I've actually done this. So this is made of um, uh, 5 8 uh, plywood. I just cut into, by measuring the um, size, I cut into them. And uh, then I, I put um, two by fours, two by twos on the bottom to make it uh, elevated, make it leveled, and just put them in there. It's carpeted, it's outdoor carpets on top of it. So it's very comfortable. I can fish bare feet in it, which is really nice in the summer. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the setup. And I'll talk a little bit more about all the other stuff we have on it once we get out there. I've seen a few cutthroat trout jumping out there. So I'm pretty excited to get out there, talk a little bit more about the boat and fish at the same time. So let's get out. All right, so this seems like a really good place to do our next features on the boat. So the very first thing we'll talk about is the motor that we use for this boat. So a boat this size, you can put on a 20 horsepower um, gas outboard uh, motor. Uh, but what we have on here is just a small electric uh, Minkota Traxxas 55 pound thrust um, electric motor. Um, the reason we have this is because we, we fish a lot of small lakes and uh, you know, we don't really need all the power to get around to all the spots. And it's also quiet. So it doesn't scare the fish in the water. You can kind of creep up to the fishing spots where you want to go to. Uh, so we like it. It's, it's 
just a really nice experience to have this on here. A lot of people have a 9.9 .9 horsepower on here um, sometimes, um, just because uh, a lot of legs have a speed restriction. It's usually under 10 horsepower, so 9.9 .9, it's a good one to have if you want to fish all the cover all the lakes uh, you want to go to in British Columbia. So yeah, so that's the motor that we put on here and uh, the next thing we talk about are the anchors so most people only have one anchor on the boat um, but that's not very good because uh, if you if you anchor on a windy day with one anchor what's going to happen is you're going to be rotating quite a bit you're going to be spinning quite a bit because the wind's going to be pushing you around um, the alternative is to have two anchors that like what we have here is one on the front and one on the back and these these anchors are 20 pound heavy each, so it's 20 pound each, uh, because on a windy day, if you have anything less than that on a 14 foot boat, um, you're going to be pushed around quite a bit. So at least 20 pound or more, that's what you want to have. So the anchors are on these anchor holders made by Scotty Fishing Products, and Scotty makes a variety of mounts that you can put on the boat, and we we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So the anchor uh, holders goes on the mount and uh, if I can these the anchors already down I'll pull it up a little bit just to show you and if I want to drop the anchor I just pull the rope up and drop it and if I let go of the rope and it would just automatically lock itself so you wouldn't be you know you don't you wouldn't lose all the rope like like when you don't have a, a mount like that so yeah so you can just let it go and it will lock itself so the amount of rope I have on here is uh, it's 50, you can use anywhere from 50 to 70 feet long. Um, a, lot of times, a lot of times when we, when we fish for trout, um, the depth is only about 5 feet up to 20 feet. Um, but if you fish for kokanee, and, and uh, you, you're using, you got to use ropes up to 50 feet because you're fishing 40 feet, 50 feet deep. And uh, having 60 or 70 feet deep uh, uh, amount of rope, it's good because uh, a lot of times the rope's are uh, in an angle. So even if you're anchoring 50 feet, you definitely need that extra few feet uh, to make sure you cover the bases. You, would, you don't want to be running down to the very end and uh, running out of rope. The other important thing that we have on the boat um, is a fish finder or depth sounder. So this thing here comes in pretty handy. If you're fishing for a kokanee, um, you want to be sounding the fish, the schools of fish that you've seen in our other videos. Um, you know, it, it makes fishing so much easier if you know where the fish are. But most of all, this thing here um, tells you the depth. So it's really important to know the depth, the lake contour, all the structures in the lake, and knowing where the structures are um, is where you can find the fish. So it can definitely improve your fishing success if you have this thing around. So this thing just mounted on here. I can just take this off quite easily, like that and just clips on here like that. Yeah. So, like I say, like I say, it tells you the depth, tells you the water temperature. Um, yeah, this Hummingbird model actually has many other features that I don't really use. It has the GPS, so you can track exactly where you've been fishing, where you've been catching the fish, you can mark out on the map, and so you can go back to the exact same spot if you want to. So the very last thing we'll talk about are these Scotty mounts that I have for the boat. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Scotty Fishing Products, um, they make a variety of mounts that you can put around the boat. Some are permanent that you can screw onto the boat, um, some are more temporarily. So you can just uh, screw this one on by hand, like this one is an Orlok mount, um, and this one is a clamp on mount. And I, I use this quite often, um, especially for um, trolling and uh, fishing on the bottom for a company and because you can you can put on a um, rod holder like this so this is a this way this is a spinning rod holder that you can put on it's gonna adjust the height you can so you can you can actually change the angle of the rod the way you want your rod pointing so if you want your rod pointing straight up or level down just changes the angle of the rod holder and uh, then you can put your rod in like so and then you're fishing so what I like to do is I like to put the the, the 
butt of the rod just right at the edge so I can grab the rod really quickly. But you can, the proper way you, you want to do is you can put the rod all the way back here. So this is very secure, you, you'll never lose your rod like that. And uh, it's just a little harder to take the rod out like this way. Um, but I like to, when, if I'm fishing bait on the bottom, if I want to grab my rod really quickly, I just do it like that and grab it like that really quickly. And that, that works pretty well for me. So you can put this, like I said, you can put that on here. You can put this on here. And this will never come out. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty sturdy. This thing here, you gotta turn it and then you gotta take it out like that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard to lose your rods on these mounts. Um, so besides rod holders, you can put on a cup holder if you want. If you wanna get fancy, you wanna have your drinks uh, while you're fishing. So you can put this on like that. You have a cup holder in the summertime. Um, the other one that I use a lot is these camera mounts. So Scotty came out with these camera mounts a couple years ago. Um, they're compatible for both GoPro cameras and just regular screw-on cameras. So there's two different mounts on top of it. So and you can just put this on here and put this on here like that and uh, put your GoPro on here. And again, this will not come out and you will not lose your camera like that. I've actually had my DSLR camera on here to take uh, self photos as well for fish photos and I actually have in the past I trust these mounts so much I, I have my um, an extender extends out with the mount on the, out here to take photos right at the edge of the water as well so it's, it's, they're very handy and but generally I use these for filming so if I you see some of the videos um, I have the camera set up around the boat to just film me fishing that way and that works works pretty well um, yeah so these are very very handy mounts to have so I generally just carry a few of them and bring them along and just put them, put them around the boat uh, wherever I need them. So there you have it. So this is our family fishing boat and we've been pretty happy with it since we got it about a year ago. And uh, the G3 1442 has been fantastic for a family size like ours is a family of three. Um, but uh, they, they definitely make different ones as well. If you want to find out more about G3 boats, make sure you check out their website. And as you can see, there are many different options when it comes to what motor you put on, uh, the way you anchor, you, you mount your anchors, the way you mount your fishing rods, the way you organize the, your fishing stuff in the boat. And uh, this is just the way we like to do it and definitely play around with it, uh, the way you play around with your boat. And uh, so to find out which way is the best to suit your needs. And if you have any other questions regarding boat fishing or lake fishing in British Columbia, definitely leave a comment in our in this video and I'm definitely happy to answer your question and uh, check out our website at fishingwithrod.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So until next time, good luck fishing.